Donald Trump is right, isn't he, when he says the old way is broken and there is no point in repeating the exact same formula, you have to reach out to new solutions? No, he's not right. He doesn't know anything about it. I tell you what the Middle East doesn't re need right now is a know-nothing American president like Donald Trump. And the reality is that the American president has endorsed an illegal situation. Israel is in illegal occupation of East Jerusalem, Arab Jerusalem, and its sovereignty over West Jerusalem is not recognized by the international community. That is a legal fact. Now, Donald Trump has chosen to violate international law by endorsing something very illegal, which is Israeli control, sovereignty over Jerusalem, calling itself the capital, this kind of thing. This is very, very bad. When it's... he says he is deeply committed to peace, when he says this is nothing more than a recognition of reality, do you not have faith that this is the first step of what could be a solution? No, of course not. First of all, it does not acknowledge that the Palestinians have any rights. I notice your, your um, uh, co commentator, uh, Mark Urban, talking about aspiration. Palestinians have a right to the city. I was born in Jerusalem. I'm part of the indigenous people of Jerusalem. I'm a native of Jerusalem. I have rights. I don't have aspirations. And the fact that the president of the United States can't even bring himself to mention the Palestinian rights in that city is appalling. And that's the first problem. And of course, the second problem is we know that Donald Trump is not a free agent. He is surrounded by pro-Israel advisers, pro-Israel officials. To be fair, His... the American stance uh, towards Israel has not differed particularly from one president to another. No, because it's always been dictated by Israeli interests. So what are you saying, that he cannot broker peace or America cannot broker peace in the region? No, of course not. He can't. He's compromised. He is surrounded by pro-Israel propagandists, people who want Israel's interest above any other. He cannot operate as a free agent, even if he had the wit to do it. God, I want to talk about the, the practicalities now, because he has said he's calling on both sides to respect the status quo. How should Mahmoud Abbas respond? How should young Palestinian men respond if they feel upset by what they've heard tonight? Are they, should they legitimately protest or should they work towards this two-state solution that he talked about. Yeah, listen, there's no two-state solution possible. If Jerusalem has gone out of the equation, so we can forget about that, please, don't let's discuss it. Now, when you say how they should, I don't know how they should, but I know how they feel. They will protest, they are angry, and they have every right to be angry. What is so dangerous about this? Because it's not even... Look, it's bad enough it's illegal. It's bad enough that Trump is influenced by all, all kinds but of... But I'm talking about the practicalities. No, but... At this point, do the moderates yes. just give up and say, we can't even no, envisage no, a two-state no, solution? listen, listen. It's not about moderates. It's not about excuses. Please let me be clear. This is about a people, a whole people who have rights in that city. Of course they are angry. Of course they will protest. Nobody should be surprised. Why I think this is so dangerous, apart from the fact it's absolutely misguided, why it is so dangerous is because, you know, one of the first things that might happen, and watch for this, is that Israel will be emboldened to take over the Islamic holy places. Okay. It's had its eye on the Aqsa Mosque for a long time. And if they take it over now with lots of new self-confidence, watch what happens. Let me put some of those points now to Mark Regev. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Ambassador, it's hard to think of a more provocative way to hunt for peace in the Middle East than this statement. It is a joke, isn't it? I beg to disagree, Emily. I think this was a just move and a good move for peace. It's a just move because there's an international norm that everyone, res everyone respects. Norm? Th a norm. The everyone EU doesn't. No, the Pope no. doesn't. The UN doesn't. Allow me to make my point, Emily. There's a norm that uh, it's respected every country's right to choose their capital. That's a sovereign right of every country on the planet. And there are countries, as you know, Emily, who have 
changed their capital cities. Turkey changed its capital city. Uh, China changed its capital city. You and know even how Germany. provocative this move is. But Every why, bit of why symbolism are we counts. denied the right? Why are we denied the right to choose our own capital city, a right that every country on this planet has? So you can call it what you want. The Palestinians can call it what they want. My question to you is, from what you have seen so far of Donald Trump, what is it that makes you think he is a classy peace broker? What is it that makes you think he's committed to solving the world's crisis, that he has a firm grip on international relations? Do you really want to tie your country's future to him as a peace broker? I would urge you to look at this decision on the substance, and the substance is positive. The substance is that he is saying he's committed to a two-state solution, to a peace process, and he's done that by deeply offending and inflaming relations in that part of the world. Let's stop for a moment. The Palestinians and the Arab world officially say that they recognize Israel within the 1967 boundaries. And so, we all know that Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel since 1949. So why is there a problem with recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital? All the issues it's of borders can be negotiated. It's extraordinary that you are putting that question to me. You know this area. You know the complexities inside out. You have a responsibility, don't you, to tell him he's wrong. Didn't you think it would be more important to not look at the short-term gains and to get the longer-term peace process right? We all have a responsibility to get it right. And what is the fact? The fact is the Israeli government sits in Jerusalem. Our executive is there. Our Supreme Court is there. Our parliament is there. When foreign leaders choose to meet with Israeli leaders, they come to Jerusalem. When foreign diplomats meet with their Israeli counterparts, they come to Jerusalem to ignore this. You're parroting his lines without this. acknowledging quite how much offence it has caused to Palestinian residents. Now, you heard what Geet just said. She said it will embolden Israelis to forget the two-state solution, to forget the, sac the sacred, the sanctity of, of the Mosque of Al-Aqsa and all the rest of it, because this is where you think now that Israel can claim whatever it wants. You have the my, my, acceptance of my the My Prime President. Minister said just two hours ago, he said that we will maintain the holy sites and continue to keep the status quo and the religious rights of all peoples you will need to be do protected. more than that don't you it's not just about religious freedoms it's about respecting people who call that their home and who assert their claim to it so my question to you is what is the olive branch now that israel the israeli government has to offer to palestinians to recognize that this is something that they do not consider fair let's be clear what's fair or legal you cannot and legal you could not have peace without Jerusalem being Israel's capital. And those on the Palestinian side who have these dangerous fantasies that somehow we're going to throw all the Jews out of Jerusalem, that is a non-starter. And if President Trump today has, has drawn a line in the sand and said it's time for the Palestinians to recognize that the Jewish people have national rights in Jerusalem, that we have a right to our own capital city, that is a positive mood. It's just and it's good for peace. Mark Regger, thank you very much indeed. We're